All right, cool. Let's get started. Um, yeah. All right, thanks everybody for being here uh, on the Zoom and for anybody who's watching on YouTube. Uh, we got another edition of our member spotlight today. So we've got Jackie Stewart and Chuck Harris uh, on today. What's up, guys? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for Good having morning. us on. Yeah, for sure. Indeed. So, Jackie, let's start with you. Um, okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about like your transition from you know, player to coach and how that kind of all happened. Yeah. So I was at Grove City College. That's where I went to undergrad and that's where I played all four years. Um, small division three institution. Um, we were part of the president's athletic conference and Grove City is located an hour north of Pittsburgh and I'm from Pittsburgh. So not a far trip. Um, my journey of coaching really began my senior year when I saw that basketball was kind of slipping away and I didn't like that. <laughs> um, so my, my college coach, Coach Foose, really had a personal impact on me, watching her create the program that she did um, and the championship culture that she created and the impact she had on me and my teammates really pushed me to be a coach. Um, so from there, I was part of the WBCA so you want to be a coach class of 2017 in Dallas Texas which was really awesome experience um, and then my coaching career kind of sparked off from then yeah that's awesome okay give us the brief scouting report on you as a player Jackie oh geez <laughs> um, I played combo guard um, I, I I'm not good at bragging about myself <laughs> All um, right. no worries. I uh, had a lot of fun as a player, um, started all four years, um, helped shooter, the team. Were you a shooter, more of a driver, what? Uh, mid-range, and mid -range. I know coaches hate the mid-range pull-up right now, but I, I'm a big believer in if you practice it, then you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, boo. Yeah, Jimmy, the analytics, <laughs> the analytics guy. Uh, not approved. Um, okay, so Jackie, so uh, you tell us about like your first coaching job and yeah. how you got it. Um, so I started off as the graduate assistant coach at DeSales University, Division three school. Um, it's in Center Valley, PA, which is near Allentown and Bethlehem. Um, we were part of the Mac Freedom Conference. Um, and I was the assistant with coach Fred Richter. He's been there for 30 years now. He's just an amazing coach. Um, he's a mentor for me till this day. We talk every single day, just an awesome person. Um, and our first year there, we finished second in the conference. Um, we lost to FDU Florham in a tough game at FDU. And then our second year was some great recruiting and the girls just really, really bought in that year with our recruits. Um, and we went 27 and three um, with a sweet 16 finish in the NCAA tournament. We were cut short there. We should have won that game, but um, it was just a great year we had my second year there. Um, and then from there, I got the job as the director of basketball operations at Colgate University. Um, and we had a record breaking season there as well this past season. So um yeah so basically everywhere you go you guys win at a high level is what you're saying. <laughs> I, I guess so <laughs> that's good I, I like I, to win <laughs> yeah for sure so what was like the transition like from you know going into that first coaching job um and you know just the player to coach transition like what was that like big learning I mean, curve or, especially I'm sure at the small you know at the small college level you have to wear so many hats right Yes. So from, I think the biggest thing from Grove City to DeSales was um, people talking about my age. Um, I went in when I was 22 years old as the assistant coach and the seniors, some of the seniors were, I was just two months, three months older than them, but they didn't know it. And that was my goal for them to never know that. And they all thought I was maybe 26 years old at that point, And I'm still not even 26 years old. Um, so that was, that was the biggest transition in getting their respect, earning their respect, um, which was great and just building relationships with them. Um, so yeah, that, that, that would be it for DeSales with that transition. And then 
the transition from division three to division one was a big jump as well. Um, I think the main thing there was learning all the NCAA division one roles because they are drastically different than division three. Um, yeah. But learned quickly and it was just a great transition. I was excited to jump in as a young professional. Um, I, I just really wanted to learn what division one was all about coming from playing D3 and coaching D3. I kind of wanted to get into the division one um, coaching career and learn as much as I could. And how did you get hooked up with the Colgate staff? Were they, did you know them from your playing days or what was the connection? Uh, Coach Fred Richter knows Coach Cleary. That was the connection there. Got you. So your boss at the South kind of yes. hooked you up. You obviously did a good job for him and he recommended yes. you. I still had to interview, but yes. Nice. Um, so what about like going from the South where I'm sure you're doing everything on the court from workouts, practice, scouting reports, yeah. And then you get the call up to the division one level and your ops. So you're not allowed to be on the court. Is that, is that hard for you? Or is it, I know you, you mentioned learning a couple of times, so I know it's new and you probably are enjoying that, but is it hard to not be on the court? It's tough. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to change a lot. I, I can't coach on the court. Can't coach during practice. I can't do scouting reports. I can't recruit on the road. Everything that I love, I couldn't do. Um, but I just really dove into every other aspect of being director of ops. And my career goal is to be a division three head coach one day. Um, so that's why I really took this job seriously and took the job in the first place because division three head coaches wear all the hats. Like you just said, they are the dobos. They are the video guys. Like they do it all. So I think taking that job was big for me in my career and learning scheduling hotels, scheduling flights, scheduling food, just those little things. Um, but I really dove in and um, built relationships with the girls, even though I was the director of operations. Um, and I learned how to do that, not being a coach on the court, per se. Yeah, for sure. A lot yeah. of times the Dobos have the best relationships, because that's who the players go to. Oh, it's because I give them all the food. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the meal money. <laughs> um, Okay, so what's been the biggest thing that you've learned or even like biggest piece of advice for somebody in that Dobo role? Because it is a lot. I've been there before. Like, it is. It's a lot of stuff. It is. Um, I would say just dive in. Um, you can still be a coach and a Dobo. Um, I still consider myself a coach, even though I'm the director of ops. Um, and so do the girls. And they give me that respect as well. Um, just be at practice, give the head coach and the coaching staff your input, be there for um, watching recruiting film breakdown, be there for scout film, dive in, ask them questions, ask them if you can join in during office hours and learn. Um, those are some of the things that I've done as director of ops. So um, you can still be a coach, even though you're the director of operations. I think that would, that would be my biggest takeaway. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think you're right. I think like that Dobo role really does give you like a uh, behind the scenes look at like how to actually run a program. In it some does. ways, I think that role prepares you more to be a head coach than anything. For sure. It does. A lot of people don't see it that way, but it it is really true. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, touch on this for me, Jackie. Like you mentioned it, you've been at three different programs. All three have been super successful. Like what, is there any common denominator or like what, what made each program win? Yeah, I get this question a lot. My answer to that is buy-in. That's it. I've been, me and the head coach, me and myself preaching the same message, um, same uh, core values on the team. But, but if you have girls that just buy in that year to what you're telling them and what the mission and vision of the team is that year, you're going to be successful. And at the sales, our, our um, motto that year was shared success. And basically shared success meant every single person's role on that team was important. And the girls really bought into that. We had high energy at 
every single practice, every single day, high energy. They just wanted to be there. And I think that's the key. If you have players that want to be there and want to win, then you're going to win. It's all about buy-in. Yeah, I love it. Um, and did they all three like have different ways of getting their teams to buy in or is it similar stuff? Uh, similar, just um, casting the vision for the team, um, making sure everyone's on board, holding everybody accountable to our standards that we have on the team. Um, so pretty much the same across the board. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Jackie, you make it sound simple. It's it sound <laughs> real easy. Yeah, it's not simple. <laughs> it is very uh, hard to build a culture, but yeah, once you have standards, core values, and things you can hold the team accountable to, kind of just falls in place. Yeah, I love it. Okay, um, and then I love how like you've got like a very specific goal in mind of being a Division Three head coach. What is it about that level specifically, and why why is that like your goal? Um, I'm passionate about it. Um, I. The other thing I did with director of ops job was taking it. Do I want to be a division one coach? Is this something that I want to do? Do I want to be a division two coach? Um, as a young professional, I just really wanted to see and open my eyes to something new. And I learned that I am passionate about division three. Um, I love the student athlete experience at the division three level. Um, it's passionate to me. It's, I'm passionate about it and I can relate to the girls at that level because I played it. So I understand the demands of being a, both a student and an athlete at that level. So um, yeah, I'm just a D3 girl through and through. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so with that in mind, like what, I mean, it's always hard to predict and, and look ahead, but like what, you know, is there a certain age you wanna achieve that goal by and what is your ideal career path look like? Um, I don't have a certain age. I kind of just want, I, I believe I'm going to end up where I'm supposed to end up, whenever that is. Um, that's kind of how I live my life, faith-based. Um, so I, I just know I'm going to end up where I'm supposed to end up and uh, God's perfect timing and things like that. So I don't have a plan, but I know God has a plan. <laughs> that's kind of it. Yeah, awesome. I love it. Um, tell me something about Colgate. Like that is like one of the schools I probably know the least about in Division One. Uh, we're part of the Patriot League, so a very high academic league. Um, we are in upstate New York in a town called Hamilton, very small town, um, beautiful campus, um, small school. I think we have about 2,500 students that attend Colgate, um, but great great academic school, great athletic school, um, small town. So you get a lot of uh, fans at the game and community support there. Um, but the Patriot League is also just a great league to be in. So it's fun. For sure. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay. Last question, Jackie, uh, about like going back and forth from division three to division one. Talk about like it, the staff size and just, working with that many people on a daily basis compared to, you know, when you're at a smaller college and it may be two people on staff. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's a lot. Cause we have, uh, oh gosh, how many people we have the head coach, we have the top assistant, second assistant, third assistant, and then me. So we have five people on staff compared to what I was used to being just me and the head coach. Um, so there's a lot of voices, a lot of, different opinions, which is great. Um, a lot of people have things to bring to the table every single day. Um, yeah, it, it's great. It's, it's different, but I love it. Um, but I, I do tend to love the D3 of just me and the head coach or me, the head coach, and maybe a volunteer assistant or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's a lot. There's a lot of people <laughs> that you have to keep accountable of and communicate with and keep on the same page every single day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love it. Jackie, great job. Are there any Thank questions um, from anybody uh, for Jackie? I have a quick question. Okay. Um, so you kind of spoke to uh, you being young and having to be a few months older than the girls you were coaching. How did you really 
um, like just kind of a, a few points of how you really like handled that and, and how you were able to, and maybe that was more of a positive than necessarily a negative, but if you could just kind of speak to like a few points on, on being a young coach with, you know, players yeah. close to your age. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think my demeanor is just professional when I walk into the building. Um, so I kind of hold that standard really high for myself. Um, and first day off the bat, my name is Coach Stewart, and that is it. If you call me Jackie, we're going to have a problem. Um, so I kind of just set the standard there and build relationships with them. That's, that's key. That's what builds trust. Um, so just getting to know them as more than a basketball player is kind of my motto. I, uh, care more about the person than the player. Um, so yeah, I, I just get to know them as people, um, off the basketball court and earn their respect that way. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry, I got a fire truck driving by. Any <laughs> questions uh, from anybody else for Jackie? Okay, Jackie, again, thank you so much. Great job. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. We appreciate it and look forward to following along with your career. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, let's, let's slide over to Chuck. Chuck Harris from Ohio Basketball Club. What's up, Chuck? How you doing? I'm, I'm well. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Good. So tell us a little bit about your journey. You play, you guys both like from the Northeast region, which is interesting. Um, coincidence. Yes, so sir. You played at Canisius, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So talk yeah. to us about uh, kind of like your career and getting started in coaching. Okay. Well, uh, first off, you know, thank you for uh, having us on. And, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to, uh, you know, be a part of uh, the organization for these past few months and learn and grow. Uh, so just wanted to start with that. But uh, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I was able to uh, gain a scholarship to Canisius. I uh, played four years there. Um, and I've, after uh, my four years there, I was able to uh, gain a contract in Germany. So um, I was uh, playing in Germany for about a half of a season before I actually uh, tore my meniscus. Um, now, a, a year prior, my senior year at Canisius, I tore my left meniscus. So now here I am on uh, two bad wheels, you know, in Germany. And um, the doctors at that point, they said, you know what, I'm, uh, you're, you're only 21, but you have the knees of a 40-year-old man. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it was either uh, get reconstructive surgery to prolong my career for another, you know, four or five years or um, just kind of hang it up, you know, so I didn't want any screws or anything else, any more complications. So I uh, decided to give that up after one year and um, came back home, was trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do next with my life. I um, was working some odd jobs, you know, uh, college admissions and things like that. Um, but then, uh, I hooked up with my former high school coach, uh, who was at um, Inkster High School, and uh, became his assistant for a year. Uh, after that year, I was about just about to join on uh, with Concordia University in Ann Arbor um, as a volunteer assistant uh, before the job opened up at Canisius. And I ended up uh, taking the job at Canisius as the director of basketball operations um, for head coach Jim Barron, who was uh, formerly of Rhode Island uh, College, uh, University, excuse me. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to get that job just through, you know, having a good rapport as a student, uh, as a student athlete. And, and I still knew some of the administrators and they put in a good word for me. So I was lucky enough to land that job with Coach Barron. I spent two years in that role as ops. And uh, during that time, you know, I was going into my third year. And uh, the assistants that I worked with, they were pushing me and saying, Chuck, you know what? You got to get on the road. You got to, you know, go go ahead and get that experience. You know, get on the road, network. That's where all the magic happens. It's going to help your career. So um, they had, the, the staff had a good relationship with Coach Lombardi at uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Uh, really good D2 school, um, one of the best in the country. Uh, so I was lucky enough to land a second assistant job there. Uh, for a year, <clears throat> learned a lot underneath Coach Lombardi, you know, got on the floor, got on the road, um, 
And after that year, I was able to uh, transition that into a first assistant uh, position at Mercyhurst University uh, up at Erie um, under uh, Coach Gary Manchel, uh, which is another really good coach and really good program. Uh, so I was there for uh, two years. Um, and then going into my, well, actually, it was a one year, I'm sorry, going into one year, going into my second year, um, my wife, she, she got a, a call for a job at Nationwide Children's Hospital, um, where she did her internship. And for her and her profession, that job would be like me getting a high major division one job, you know, so, uh, you know, made the tough decision for the family. We had a, a little, one little girl at that time, and uh, we said, I spoke with Coach Manchel about it, and he said, you know what, you know, you guys got to do what you got to do, what's, what's best for your family, and um, so he, he, he urged me to take that, you know, allow, allow my wife to take that job and, and transition to Ohio, and uh, so at that point, um, you know, I was, I was just like, honey, you know what, you know, let's, let's go pursue your dreams, I can figure my stuff out later, you know, basketball will always be there, um, so luckily, luckily enough, I hooked up with Columbus State Community College, um, while I was at IEP, I went down to the Division II, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Division II JUCO National Tournament in Danville, and uh, I was recruiting one of the Columbus State players. So I developed a relationship with that coach, and uh, lo and behold, you know, a couple of years later, I'm, I'm asking him if, if I could help him out, you know, uh, with with a coaching position. So, um, you know, he he luckily enough uh, brought me along, and I've been there uh, for the past three years at Columbus State, as well as with the Ohio Basketball Club and uh, on the Adidas, uh, Adidas Gauntlet. So it's been, it's been a transition um, and it's, it's, it's crazy now because we're actually transitioning again back to Michigan where our family, uh, where our family is, my wife and I, uh, that's where all our is, for our little girls, so with children with autism and I will be um, hopefully enough if everything works out next year with AAU and uh, the basketball season. I'll be at Schoolcraft uh, College, uh, Division II JUCO up there, and working with the family on the EYBL circuit. So it's kind of been my journey, just uh, bounced around a little bit, and luckily, luckily enough, landing in, in good positions. Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, congratulations on the move. I didn't even realize that that you guys were moving back. Um, so congrats there. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, actually. <laughs> uh, get the U-Haul, start packing up the boxes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, uh, I know that's yeah, the, that worst, is the worst, worst profession. <laughs> um, okay. So lots to talk about. Um, first of all, yes. Jim Barron, true or false, yes. best mustache in college basketball. Oh my God. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah. We, uh, we had T-shirts made with his uh, "Fear the Stash" T-shirts during that time, so he's a <laughs> amazing <it>. mustache. <laughs> um, all right, let's go back. I got a bunch of questions for you, but let's go back to like your experience playing overseas in Germany. What is like one thing you tell yes. players all the time about like that experience that people like don't really realize before they go over there? Yeah, uh, it's really, um, you really have to be focused. Uh, you have a lot of free time and downtime over there. Uh, so it's really just you and working on your craft. Um, you know, in the league that I was playing in, we only played really once a week, you know, which was uh, on Saturday. So uh, the rest of the time it was spent um, conditioning and working on your craft and there's a lot of downtime. So you really just have to be you know, focused on your craft and, um, you know, making sure that you're, you're investing in yourself and if, if you want to, you know, continue that career. Uh, um, as well as uh, you, you kind of got to get your foot in the door over there. A lot of people think that you can come in and, you know, make a whole bunch of money and, and, and it's all glamorous, but uh, over there, they really like veterans. Um, so, you know, unless you're coming from a high major program, you're going to have to kind of prove yourself so a little bit and put the time in before you really get that really prison. Um, you know, they really like to see a resume, not just what you did in college, but what you can do on a professional level. So gotcha. Great stuff. Okay. Um, and then 
you kind of talked about how you were at Canisius and, and the staff there encouraged you to get on the road and network and meet people. Um, and, and I love yeah. the fact that I feel like so many people get like enthralled with the division one level and they got to stay there and which, which I'm not a big you know, yeah. fan of. Uh, and I mean, whatever, whatever makes you happy. But um, right. I love the fact that you, you kind of went and, and got that hands-on experience. What was that like? to go and, and like, yes. Uh, did you feel pressure to like meet a bunch of people and how'd you go about like, or were you just out recruiting and coaching and the relationships happened organically? Yeah, I try not to, uh, not to force uh, too many relationships. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a fine line between uh, for but then uh also then uh, coaches have idolized you know and you're out there on the road with him and you say at the same time you have to go ahead and put yourself out there and, and make those introductions and uh if you want to to, to really learn and, and and grow and develop your network you know, um, you don't want to be a pest, but at the same time, you know, um, just want to introduce myself and um, maybe I can come work at camp and, and do these types of things for you in the future. And, you know, and then over time, you just, those relationships develop, but it's not, you don't want to be uh, weird about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what's the biggest difference? Well, first of all, I know you mentioned your wife had the job opportunity, but I, I don't think you mentioned her. Your your Wi-Fi cut out a little bit. What does your wife do? Oh, she uh, she's a child psychologist, and she specializes uh, working with children with autism. That's awesome. That's incredible. So yeah, I feel like one of the major issues. There's so many like coaches that have, you know, in the coach. There's a lot of issues in the coaching industry, right? And mm -hmm. one of them is like a lot of people have their priorities skewed away yes. from their family into their work life. Um, yeah. So just really like a testament to you to be able to like have a true partnership with your wife and decide, you know, okay, now it's, we're going to, we're going to follow you here. You yeah. know, there's basketball everywhere. So. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. She's a, she's a trooper. She understands, um, she understands the way the, the game goes. Um, you know, her, my brother-in-law, her brother, uh, he was a, a really good player and he, spent probably about 10 years overseas. So she comes from a basketball family and she understands how it goes. And, uh, you know, in a few years here, when it's my time to kind of get back out there and uh, chase what I have to chase, then, you know, she's going to be understandable about it. So we have it all kind of figured out. <laughs> <laughs> as much as anyone can, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you have pretty much been at every single level now, uh, almost. Almost, yeah. Any, any like observations or preferences or anything like that comparing levels um, well um you know as, as jackie was saying and uh, you were alluding to there are uh, differences with uh you know staff sizes and support um on the higher level between the higher levels and the, and the lower levels the, the good thing about you know like the, the division two level um like you said you, you get your hands in everything um you know uh you know i ran camps you know i ran the high school camp while i was at uh iep ran the high school team camp the, the day camps um coach lombardi put me in charge of uh, all of our community service so we're, we're going out and i'm gathering players to go out and, and read to uh to local elementary school kids and things of that nature so you know you you, you get your hands on a, a lot of different uh pots on the lower level but then there are a lot more resources on on the higher level um which kind of makes your job a little bit easier in some respects. Um, so there's there's kind of uh, pros and cons to to each way, but I feel as though you can't go wrong either way, um, especially as a young a young coach trying to uh, get your feet uh, underneath you and, and learn and grow. You know the, the lower levels are definitely uh, lower levels or support positions on higher levels are, are really good um, to kind of you know start to start to mold yourself as a coach. Yeah, I love it. What about the grassroots level? Like, and and just for anybody that doesn't know, OBC is one of the better grassroots programs in Ohio, let alone, you know, probably the yeah. country. 
So yes, sir. really high talent level. What's that yes. been like coaching, coaching that, you know, that age group? Uh, yeah, I was, I was really lucky uh, to, uh, you know, slide into a spot with uh, Coach Duncan. Um, he runs the program over there. Really, really great guy. Uh, Well-connected, you know, as well. Um, on the relationship side of it, you know, having, being, being on that level with those, those, that level of talent, uh, you're able to meet a lot of people. Um, and like, like we say, it doesn't have to be uh, manufactured, you know, um, you know, like, for example, we had four or five kids who are uh, been major, high major uh, kids that are already signed. But during that time, we were, you know, reaching out to coaches, sending them our, um, our schedules in the summers and, you know, just saying, hey, you know, coach, here's a kid we think you, you know, might like. You know, if, if you want to come by, here's our schedule. And, uh, you know, you'll see Cincinnati and West Virginia and Ohio and Bowling Green on the sideline. And you're able to develop those relationships with those coaches um, and not just, you know, kind of what can you do for me? You know what I mean? Is is what can I do for you? Which uh, I think helps a lot um, in developing those organic relationships and uh, long lasting relationships. Because, you know, if you, if you have access to good players and a good pipeline, then you know, guys might reach out to you a little bit more often. Yeah, I feel like not enough coaches take advantage of coaching grassroots basketball because like you just said, like you meet so many people, especially if you're able to get with a program that has good players. It's, yeah. You know, what, what's it been like uh, in terms of like the time commitment? Are you, is it pretty easy to juggle like the regular season at the college level and then jump right into AAU? You know what? Uh, with, with it being JUCO, uh, we're, we're kind of limited on what we do in the summer. Um, so it really it really didn't interfere. It, we just kind of lay, lay it from one to another. Um, you know, it was, it was a little bit difficult because I'm in Columbus. Um, and, you know, all we see is up in the uh, Cleveland area. So I would drive uh, two years, uh, excuse me, two years, two hours to practice, um, you know, back and forth uh, on the weekends and uh, when we weren't playing. So, but, you know, uh, you kind of, got to sacrifice it if it's something you want to do. So uh, it would, those two hours I uh, went by kind of fast, you know, for me. Um, but, you know, the, the time commitment, you are out on the road a lot. Um, but with those two seasons, they never, never uh, interfere with each other. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Chuck, great job. It was great getting Thank to you. know a little bit more about you. Does anybody have questions for Chuck uh, before we let, let them go? Yeah, so you were at IUP and Mercyhurst, right? Yes. Uh, How did wanted... you survive in the snow belt? Oh, God. <laughs> I wanted to mention uh, we were actually living in Grove City. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. when I was uh, working at Mercyhurst, my wife, she was working down in Pittsburgh. So the only thing we could find was in between Erie and, and uh you know, Pittsburgh was Grove City, directly That's one hour each way. That's all there is in between. That's all there is. <laughs> really, really good outlet, too. I, I really enjoyed the outlet mall right there. But, yeah, people ask uh, me if Grove City College, if our mascot is the outlets a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great shopping. But, uh, you know, I'm from Michigan. So, you know, the snow really didn't affect me. Uh, oh, that's true. Yeah, so it was it was easy transition for me. Cool. I don't know how either of you guys do it. I'm from Southern California, so. I wouldn't last one winter. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rain is like snow to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, any other questions? Chuck, uh, Travis Lewis over at Toledo St. Francis. Uh, we played against each other. You uh, you actually know my, my best friend, Carlos Medlock. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> He's sitting here with me. Um, but – Man, welcome back to Detroit. You got to get down to Toledo, man. We got some kids. So it's just good oh, to hear you. Man. Good to connect with you, see how you've been doing since college. So Thank you. Thank you. Good to connect as well. Good to see you again. Tell uh, Carlos I said, hey, I know he's probably about to go back overseas soon. Yeah. He actually playing in TBT, so he. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, good luck. Tell him good luck. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, Chuck, Jackie, great job again. We're so glad to have you guys part of the Rising Coaches family. And, and uh, again, it was great to hear from both of you guys today. And uh, thanks, to everyone, for tuning in. Thanks again. Thank you.